Typing frog, uh, F-R-O-G. <laughs> it's okay because people think, oh, maybe I mistyped it. And so this is an easy thing to change to an authentication server. No security problem at all here. I'm not saying you remember that he typed frog from last time. Just in this session, give him a break. It doesn't count. Make the password hint about the primary password, none of the secondary password stuff. So, and the hint might be something like, I can type in text. This is my usual strong password, but they don't allow spaces. Okay, if you tell me that, then I can make it go, because I know how I would handle that situation. And that gets me out of the loop. How about this? Allow a trusted party to vouch for the user. You have an account with the bank. Your wife has an account with the bank. You're both, same account, but different access. I've forgotten my password. Well, I could go through the bank and do that sort of stuff. Shouldn't there be some little protocol where she could log in, prove she is she, and, we've, and the bank has previously said we can vouch for each other, and she can say, I know he's here, I'm logging myself in, and he's going to type his new password now. Okay? That seems like a nice usability thing. Dare, I did it again, it gets the bank out of the loop. Um, Lock the account in increasing time increments. This has been done by login since the dawn of the third age. Um, exponential back off. So you can guess a lot, but you start guessing slower and slower. Maybe you lock the account for not very long. And it doesn't hurt to remind the user of the password rules. Maybe even give the name of the authenticator. Because people often don't know whose rules they're playing by. Inside my own company, I go to some sites, and it's a different authentication server. So I'm starting to enter passwords from other systems into this system. That's not good. I'm leaking data to somebody else. By the way, we actually need research. Oh, this happens once a talk. Yeah, OK. We actually need research on account locking. I've seen very few papers that really talk about what works, what's expensive. Um, and I think the reason is because this is not really a propeller head research issue. This is something more along the lines of people who are running companies who are running help desks, and they know how much they, each lost password costs. It would be useful to get out in the world what works, what tends to cut these costs. Uh, researchers need to know this sort of thing, this. OK, so better solutions. As Fred Gramp used to say, you got to get out of the game. This is wonderful. If, if there's an attack on a web server you're not running, you're good. <laughs> uh, th this is how, if you get out of the game, it works well. So one way is don't use passwords. Use one-time passwords, perhaps with a device like this. Now, this was a device I used to use back at the labs back in the late 80s. So the technology has been around for a long time. I think this company's gone. But here is an actual login that I did back in the mid-90s to an actual machine. And the idea was I said it was Chez. It gave me a challenge. I computed the response on this little device I carried around. And it said, you're, you're in. Now, it means I have to have the device and do a couple extra steps. But it also means I'm out of the stupid password game. There are no magic rules. There's no eye of newt stuff. I just do it, and it works. If I lose it, well, it, OK, that's inconvenient. But you know, people are used to needing to have keys for their cars. Why shouldn't you have to have a key for your computer if it's something important? This doesn't seem like an unreasonable request. Of course, nowadays we use these. And they're down. They're pretty cheap. They work pretty well. I have a couple quibbles about them. But compared to passwords, these are just marvelous. And even better, I'm a big fan of this. It's in my iPhone was set up by my company. It has various secrets and stuff in it. You enter a pin, and it comes back with a passcode that's good for 30 seconds. If you enter the wrong pin, it just gives the wrong passcode. It doesn't know that it's the wrong answer. Which means if the commies steal my iPhone, they cannot tell offhand just by looking at the code what's wrong with it. What, what, whether how to log in as me. They'd have to actually have stolen it and seen a successful login in order to, to be able to crack it. I really like that. As someone who lost his iPhone back in January, I was, it was good not to, to have to worry about this. By the way, we caught him. You, don't steal my iPhone. It's just a bad idea. He has, <laughs> he has a criminal record now. <laughs> uh, but this is great, because I'm always carrying this thing with me anyway. And if I've lost my iPhone, I've got bigger problems than not being able to log in. For one thing, I don't know when my flight is, and it, you know, it's got my memory. Great things. All right, I talked about this. The forensics, yeah, 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 I said that.
challenge response passwords get us out of the game. They really are a nice solution. They're not hard to program. They're not hard to get. They're not even expensive. You can do this with printed out paper with something like S-Key. Man in the middle can still be used. I mean, they're not perfect. A pin is helpful to make two-factor authentication, and they're surprisingly cheap. Why don't we have these things everywhere? P well, the, the devices have been around, but they don't like carrying the device. They don't like entering the challenge, which is why you don't do it on the RSA stuff. Entering the response, you know, carrying multiple devices. My wife has a big ball of authentication she carries around. It has all the car keys and all the RSA keys and everything all in one massive titanium steel ring that slowly destroys the car as we're going on. Okay, so fine, you say. These are all nice. Propeller-headed theory. I still need strong passwords. My boss says that I can't convince him otherwise. But if you're going to do that, let's at least make them fun or at least make them easier to type. I mean, these I have new things with all these colons and stuff. That's hard to type. I'm a fast typist. Let me just dash in a few words. Um, and it is true that dictionary attacks are still a concern in some circumstances. I'm not going to go into the details, but it's not. Grandma doesn't face this. Um, it, it, it's, it's a different situation. Password, password strength, of course, is measure, measured in entropy, number of bits. Here's from the Cormac uh, paper. Relative number of bits, Facebook and Twitter require about 20 bits of entropy. Banks are in the mid-30s, government in mid-40s and up. That's a pretty strong password. So one way you could do this is take a short list of words and pick words randomly out of the list, and that's your passphrase. You don't get to pick the words. The random number generator does. And the longer the list, the short, fewer number of words you have to do. So if you have a really complicated dictionary, it might only be a four word passphrase. So here are um, four passphrases, each of which has 60 bits of entropy. That's enough for the government. Heck, you can do decent crypto at 60. Someone could crack it, but brute force takes a while. Value part Peter sent some computer. I think I could remember that. You know, they're pretty easy words. Or how about anxiety materials preparation sample experimental? All right, that, that seems harder. Obviously, we're using bigger words now. And now we get to the third one, bliss, rubbery, unseal, Irish. That's a really big list of words, but you only need four of them. And maybe you can do some cool things. Or you can do what Peter Honeyman did. He said, OK, 60 bits. I'll print them out in hex and memorize them. And for a few months, he carried a sheet of paper around, and after a while, he memorized it. Now, I should point out that the Honeyman password is not going to pass the strong password test that we went through at the beginning of the talk. It doesn't have special characters in it. There's no capital letters. At least it doesn't use a space, thank goodness. <laughs> and if you, so if you do this, you cannot be user chosen. You can have a user reject a suggestion and do that thousands of times if they want, waiting for something more memorable. Um, user chosen phrases a much lower entropy because, of course, they contain information. And they're going to write it down for a while. And you know, back in the old days, you're worried about people walking through the offices looking for post-it notes. I, at Bell Labs, I, somebody did that, walked to all the offices. And the next day, everyone came in, and there was a post-it note. Congratulations, you don't have passwords posted on your machine. Or you have passwords posted on your machine. This is in violation of Section 6 SJ7 GT. Um, you know, most of our, the attackers aren't present to win these days. They're in Latvia somewhere. And they may hire someone to go through and look for the post-it notes. But frankly, we're not talking com comparable situation here. And for daily use is another issue. Who's going to remember a password over a year? Many of us have to make medical choices every October about who our new medical plan is going to be. And some of us only log in once a year. Do you really remember the password for this very important service that you had a year ago? Um, words are better than the I of newt, semicolon, special characters, uppercase, space, or no space. I'd rather type six words than the other stuff. I'd even like spelling checking to give me the right word. So if I type quickly and misspell it a little, let the spelling checker fix it for me. That's No, that's not a security problem. I'm typing in real words. Wouldn't it be nice to have a password with, with a spelling checker? Isn't that kind of nice? By the way, unseal <laughs> is a word from, uh, from a long time ago, and it's where we got our capital letters from. Now, wasn't that interesting? Maybe you should pick the long one and only have four words in there. 
That was a 60-bit entropy password, and it had unseal in it. That's, that's good stuff. Passwords should be fun. And in fact, if they should be fun, and if you're thinking of redesigning something, maybe try to be a little playful, not annoyingly so. How about cussing out the computer when you log in? Here are 10 42-bit passwords. <laughs> you atrocious terrine of harmful Virginia deer vomition. OK, you can actually go to that website. I promise I don't log it, and I also promise I use high entropy sources. And go grab yourself a passphrase. Someone, if someone actually captures it, they're going to say, what is he typing? <laughs> you excruciating pony of septic red start at Chrysis? Some of these are on a really long list. This came out of the OED. Um, <laughs> anyway, cussing at the computer. This is sort of good. 42 bits, that's good. Um, I don't know if that would pass the, the testers out there. How about iPhone friendly? Pick words that when you mistap them, the correction tends to default back to the word you meant. That means some words are sort of out in the wilderness where there are no tapos nearby. I've got a grad student working on this idea right now. OK, so we're, we are coming down to our last 15 minutes. We're now going to put on our propeller hats and talk about some academia ideas for passwords. Um, I'm not suggesting that you're ever going to use any of these, but it's sort of fun to think about what re researchers are talking about. One, of course, is past photos or pictures where you click on a particular point, and it's you if you pick the right point. Do people pick the same points? Yes, that's what this paper pointed out. Another one is past faces. I don't have to remember the name of the face, just that it's familiar. The upper left hand young lady was my, my girl on this one. And uh, I had to pick out the, my face out of the, the one I was given out of the next four. And the good thing about this was there's nothing to write down. You can't save your password. I'd have to say, well, let's see. She's African American. And they come in different places. And sh she has a smile. No, that's hard to describe. So how would you save your password? Well, of course, you'd do that with your cell phone. That was my password. Um, maybe it's computer generated art. You pick images out of there. There's draw a secret where you do this. There are also gesture based ones now they're talking about. Google has one where you slide your finger around in a particular way. Here's one that uses blurry versions of photographs. And the idea is that you know what the blurry version is. And the question might be uh, point to the one that's spot or something like that. You can look. These, these all have uh, references. You can go look at them. So I'm going to give you a few wacko ideas I've thought over the years. These are not intended to be definite. It's just sort of an idea. The first one is pass maps. And the idea is that we're going to zoom into a particular point on this map, hopefully remembering how we zoomed in. And that point on the map proves that we're us. So here's the challenge. In this case, I picked New York. OK, well, what's interesting in New York? They have mountains. Forgive me, I'm from the East Coast. I realize that these are potholes out here. Mountains called the Adirondacks, actually a lovely place, very oldest mountains in the world. And we'll go in and we'll take a look at satellite map. Mm, well, nothing really catches my eye. I'll zoom in. Oh, look at that interesting lake in the upper left-hand corner. Let's take a look at it. To me, it sort of looks like an upside down poodle with a tail sticking down. And you, you, maybe you get the idea. And right here, that's the voice box. It's a yappy poodle. See, I'm going through this. So we zoom in, and I click on that, and that's my pass point. And the next time I log in, I'd have to go do the same thing. OK? Sort of new. It's a different kind of thing than remembering text or math or something like that. This is remembering position. Some people are much better at this. It's not a bad idea to offer several different types of strong authentication if you can come up with it. You know, we have three ways you can log in. Maybe you can remember your place on the map. Maybe you remember unseal Irish rubbery, whatever it is. And of course, this needs to be tested. Got to have people try it and so on. Now, the problem, and you could zoom in on lots of things, the stars. Well, I'll go to the North Star. Well, there's an interesting, you keep going in on the Sloan Digital Sky Survey, and eventually you're looking at minus uh, 24th magnitude galaxies and say, that funny one looks like my dog's nose, and click on it. So you'd zoom in. Or a picture of the Grand Canyon or craters on the moon or something like that. OK, so the problem with that one is there's a steady stream of data going between my computer and Google as I'm catching more and more data about New York State. So let's do it this way. Let's zoom in on the Mandelbrot set. 
because I don't have to ask Google about it. In fact, I'm about to show you, as far as I know, the first practical use 